Nutrition in Animals Introduction We see that whatever we or animals eat is either a plant or an animal product since we cannot photosynthesize because we lack the green pigment chlorophyll we have to depend on green plants and other animals for our nutrition so our mode of nutrition and that of other animals and of some plants is heterotrophic heterotrophic nutrition in animals is of the following four types holozoic saprozoic parasitic mutualistic Holozoic nutrition. Most animals are holozoic. It involves taking in ready made solid or liquid food substances as a whole. These are broken down in the animal's body into simpler substances that can be easily digested to provide nutrition. Holozoic animals may be herbivores, plant eating, carnivores, eat other animals, or omnivores diet having both plant and animal material saprozoic nutrition many fungi and bacteria feed by saprozoic methods the cells of the organism dissolve the dead remains of living organisms by secreting chemicals the soluble products are then absorbed into the cell body a good example is mushrooms parasitic nutrition Parasites are organisms that for part or all of its life derives nutrition through other organisms called the host. This interaction between the host and the parasite is called parasitism. Parasites are generally smaller than their hosts and absorb nutrients from the host's body fluids. Example, mosquito. Mutualistic nutrition. In mutualistic nutrition, Two organisms interact in a manner such that both are benefited. This is also called symbiosis. A very good example of mutualistic nutrition is the association between bacteria called rhizobia and plants belonging to the pea family. Rhizobia make their home in the nodules of the plant roots and obtain food from these plants while the plants obtain nitrogen through them. Digestion in grass-eating animals Have you observed cows, buffaloes and other grass-eating animals chewing continuously even when they are not eating? Actually, they quickly swallow the grass and store it in a part of the stomach called rumen. Here, the food gets partially digested and is called cud. But later, the cud returns to the mouth in small lumps and the animal chews it. This process is called rumination and these animals are called ruminants. The grass is rich in cellulose, a type of carbohydrate. Many animals, including humans, cannot digest cellulose. Ruminants have a large sac-like structure called cecum between the small intestine and the large intestines. The cellulose of the food is bacteria which are not present in humans. Nutrition in Amoeba Amoeba are organisms made up of a single cell, usually found in ponds and ditches. Their food consists of the microscopic plants and animals floating in these waters. Ingestion When amoeba comes into contact with one of these organisms, it sort of flows around the organism, forming a cup-shaped projection. This is called a food cup or food vacuole which completely encloses and ingests the food. This mode of nutrition is called phagocytosis, cell eating, digestion. In amoeba, digestion is very simple and direct. Once a prey is engulfed, certain chemicals called enzymes are released into the food vacuole. Enzymes, along with other digestive juices, break down the food forming a solution. Absorption. The food in solution form is now ready to be absorbed and assimilate. Nutrition in humans. Mouth. Food is broken down by the process of chewing. Liver. The liver secretes bile which plays a vital role in digestion in the small intestine. Gallbladder. The liver connects to the gallbladder 
and bile is stored and concentrated here before release into the small intestine. Pancreas. This gland secretes bicarbonate and digestive enzymes into the small intestine. The bicarbonate neutralizes the acid from the stomach. Large intestine. Water and useful minerals are absorbed through the walls of the large intestine back into the blood. The remains are formed into feces. Salivary glands. Enzymes produced by these glands break down starches into smaller sugar molecules. Esophagus. It is a long tube connecting the mouth to the stomach. It uses rhythmic wave-like movements called peristaltic movements to move food from the mouth to the stomach. Stomach. The stomach is a large sac-like organ which secretes HCL, enzymes and mucus. This initiates and prepares the food for chemical and enzymatic digestion. Small intestine. It is the longest section of the digestive tube, about 6 meters in length and almost all of the nutrients is absorbed here. Rectum and anus. The rectum stores the feces which is then ingested out of the body through the anus. Milk teeth and permanent teeth. The first set of teeth grows during infancy and they fall off at the age between 6 to 8 years. These are termed milk teeth. The second set that replaces them are the permanent teeth. The permanent teeth may last throughout life or fall during old age or due to some dental disease. Types of teeth Incisors They are also called biting teeth. They are eight in number, four in each jaw. The incisors are the front teeth and are so called because they help to incise, cut food. They are flat, blade-like teeth. Canines. They are also called tearing teeth. They have very sharp edges and help in tearing the food and are four in number. Premolars. They have broader grinding surfaces and therefore help in chewing and grinding of food. There are eight premolars in the human set. Molars. Molars are large back teeth having a wide grinding surface and are used primarily to chew food. Humans have 12 molars. Human teeth. We humans develop two different sets of teeth in our lifetime. The temporary set and the permanent set. The temporary set. This is the set that starts appearing at the age of about two and a half to three months and completes in about two years. These teeth are also called milk teeth. There are 20 milk teeth in the temporary set. Front teeth usually erupt when a child is from 6 to 12 months of age. Second molars between 13 and 19 months old and canines usually erupt at 19 months or older. Although the temporary set is replaced by the permanent set, the temporary set plays a very important role in the proper alignment and spacing of the permanent teeth. Around the age of six, the milk teeth start giving way to the developing permanent teeth. The temporary set sheds earlier and permanent teeth erupt earlier in girls. Human teeth The permanent set There are 32 teeth in a permanent set, 16 in each jaw. Adult humans have eight incisors, four in each jaw arranged in the middle. There are four canines, two in the upper and two in the lower. Behind the canines are the premolars, again four in each jaw, two on the left and two on the right. The molars are found at the back of the jaws behind the premolars. They are twelve in number, six each in the upper and lower jaw, three on the left and three on the right. The permanent set is larger in number and size than the temporary set. Their enamel is thicker though less white in appearance when compared with the milk teeth. Wisdom teeth Wisdom teeth are the third molars which appear between the ages of 18 and 20. They are called wisdom teeth 
because they appear so late after the other teeth have already erupted in early childhood. At the age of 18, you are an adult, hence believed to be wiser than you were as a child.